Hello everyone, welcome back and today we are looking at question 70 which is climbing stairs. So the question is straightforward, they are saying that we are climbing a staircase and it takes n steps to reach the top and they are telling us that each time we can either climb one or two steps. So anytime you want to make a move you can take one step or you can take two steps. So they want to know in how many distinct ways can we climb to the top. So example one gives us that we have two steps in the staircase. So the output should be two. Now why is that? They are saying that there are two ways to climb to the top. Either we go one step at a time, so one plus one, or we take two steps. We jump to step number two. So we have one way here, one way here, and the output should be two. Two ways. Now example 2 is saying that the staircase has 3 steps and they are saying that you can climb 1 step plus 1 step plus 1 step and this is considered one way to climb to the top. Now we have another way which is take 1 step then jump 2 steps. This is the second way and now the third way is to jump 2 steps then take the final step. So the output is 3. Now let's go to the blackboard and explain how can we tackle this. Okay here we are. And I have brought the main question that we need to keep in mind, which is in how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? I also wrote that anytime we want to make a move, we can take one step or we can take two steps. Okay. And as you can see, I have drawn a staircase and I have colored each step with a different color so we can distinguish them easier. Now, I have created steps array. This steps array will hold n plus 1 places. Now we said we have n steps. Now why am I holding n plus 1 places in the array and not just n? Well let me tell you that because I have wrote step 0. I know it's not a step, it's just a flat surface. But I have put it there for a reason. Just bear with me and you will see why. So the question said that the staircase has n steps. And I want to add step 0, which is nothing, but I want to add it. So our array will hold n plus 1 places. Okay? So what is the purpose of this array, you might ask me. Well, let me tell you this now. This array, at each index, we will hold the number of ways that we can reach that step. For instance, how many ways can you reach step 1? The answer will be here. Or how many ways can you reach step 2? The answer will be here. So this is the purpose of this array. Each time we know how many number of ways can we reach step i, we will put the answer in the array. So let's start. I just want you to forget about step 0 for a moment. We will come back to it later, okay? So starting with step 1. How many ways can you reach step 1? Now since the question said that anytime you want to make a move, we can either go one step at a time or jump two steps but step one require only one step which is hey go from step zero to step one there is only one way you can reach step one which is just go to step one with one step so we will hold one here okay now in how many ways we can reach step two well step two was in the example and the answer was two but let's see you can either go from step zero to step one then from step one to step two this is considered one way, or you can jump from step zero all the way to step two, and this is another way. So the total number of ways, you either take one step at a time or you jump. So we have two ways to reach step two. So we will put two here. Now I will come back to step zero. Let me ask you this question. In how many ways can you reach step zero? And you might ask me, well, it's not a step. What do you mean? How many ways can we reach it? I will say, yes, I know it's not a step. So let me rephrase my question. In how many ways can you reach nothing? Well, the answer is not obvious, but the answer is one. There is only one way we can reach nothing, which is we can't reach nothing. Nothing can't be reached because it's nothing. So there is only one way to reach nothing, which is you can't reach it. Okay, so I want you to notice something. When we said we want to reach step 2, we said we either can climb from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 2, or we can go from 0 to 2. So it's 
two ways. Now let's look at it from a different angle. We can reach step two either from step one or we can reach step two from step zero. If we want to reach step two from step zero, we need to jump two steps. But if we want to reach step two from step one, we only need to go one step. So in a sense, we can reach step two either from going from one to two or from going from zero to two. So one plus one equals two, okay? So now let's look at this. In how many ways can we reach step three? Well, you can go from zero to one to two, then to three, this is one way, or you can jump from zero to two, then you can go from two to three, this is another way, or you can go from step zero to step one, but then jump from one to three. So we have three ways, but let's look at it in a different way. We can come to step three either from step two or if we jump from step one. Let's look at the array. We can come to step three either from step two or if we jump from step one to step three. So if we add one plus two, this will result with three, which is the answer. We can reach step three in three different ways. Did you see the pattern? So to reach to a specific step, we can either come straight from the step before it or two steps before it. So the equation that we want to use, the number of ways to reach step i is either by coming from the step behind it, which means i minus one, or by coming from two steps before it, which is steps of i minus two, okay? So in other words, in how many ways can we reach step four? Will you say we either can come from step three or we can come from step two? So steps of four will equal step of three plus step of two. Do we know what a step of three is? Well, yeah, it's three. Do we know what step of two is? Well, we also know it. It's two. So three plus two equals five. And this is the trick to the question. So now I will tell you the reason I wrote step zero is the following. When we ask ourselves how many ways to reach step two, we can say, oh, okay, it's by step one plus step zero. Do we know what step zero is? Now, yes, we know it since we included it. It's one. And how many ways to reach step one? Well, it's also one. So one plus one equals two. And this is the idea behind the question. So let's go cut it out. It should be so quick. Okay, so we said we need to create an array which will hold the number of ways to reach step i. So int, I will call it steps to match the blackboard equals new int. And we said our array will not hold n steps, but n plus one steps to make sure we include step zero. Now we know that step zero, how many ways can we reach step zero? We said only one way, which is you cannot reach nothing. The only way to reach nothing is you can't reach it. So there is only one way. Now, how many ways can you reach step of one? Well, we know that there is only one way we can reach it, which is just go to one, take only one step. So now we have a for loop. So for int i equals what? We already took care of zero and one. So this should start from two for int i equals two. i is less than or equals to n because they are saying how many distinct ways can we reach the top or in other words, how many ways can we reach step n? So we need to include n i plus plus and basically we said the equation is steps of i equals we can either come from the step directly behind it so steps of i minus one or we can come from two steps before it which is steps of i minus two okay so in the end just return steps of n 
steps of n will hold the number of ways to reach step n. And that should be it. Let's run the code and let's submit. As we can see, faster than 100%. Okay, so let's look at the time and space complexity. Starting with the space complexity, we created an array with n plus 1 steps. So the space complexity is big O of n plus 1, but we can drop the 1. So the space complexity is simply big O of n. Now, in terms of the time complexity, we have used a for loop to move through the steps. Now, if we have n steps, the time complexity would be big O of n minus 1. Since step 1, we took care of it before the for loop. But again, we drop the minus one and simply the time complexity would be big O of N. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Best of luck to you and see you in the next one.